He sent the Holy Spirit. There was promise way back in Zechariah and Joel and John. Now, what are we to say? The resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ and the coming of the Holy Spirit reformed the earth. You have to be careful how much of the Old Testament you can bring uninformed into the new. So, in this segment, after we pray, we're going to ask the question and go into a discussion of the answer. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again in the name of Jesus just to say thank you. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being yourself. A sovereign God with plenty of mercy and goodness and grace, but also a God of justice and severity. So we thank you, Lord, for building your church and we thank you for opening our spiritual eyes of understanding that we may behold your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, at the close of the last segment, we were talking about the Jesus Christ Awareness Program and the Christ the Savior Ministry Bible School in Liberia. Uh, we have a church school and two instructors, two pastors, instructors, and they teach you 13 week, three hours per week, normally on Saturday afternoon, the essentials of the gospel message of the New Testament. And they're on what you call a, a fast track to Jesus Christ awareness. If nothing could happen to give mankind access to God, intimate and personal, until Jesus came, hung, bled, and died, and ascended back to heaven, then we should be on a fast track to get to the meat, to the heart of the matter. And that's the post-resurrection salvation. There are people that perhaps know more about David and, and Isaiah and Jeremiah than they do about Jesus' post-resurrection ministry through the Holy Spirit and the apostles. And that's too bad. Because yes, salvation is of the Jews, which means that Jesus came through the, the, the through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his, his earthly lineage, but that's earthly. Uh, this Christ that they're talking about here in Acts chapter 2, who's at the right hand of the Father exalted, that's not flesh. That's the, that's the glorified Christ. Who in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was made flesh. And now the Word sends his apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers with the word. Spirit told Cornelius, send for Peter who will tell the words whereby you might be saved. And we stand with access to God by faith in words that points to a savior. Amen. Amen. Now, so what's our question going to be? How much of this word do you believe? John 1, 14, 14, 17 say that the word was made flesh and we beheld his glory 
as of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. For the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. God's unmerited favor and the reality of his eternal plan of salvation came with Jesus. So we want to get to that part of God's eternal plan as quick as possible. And we have a program, a 13 point program called Crossing Over to New Testament Bible Theology, the Gospel of Jesus Christ, wherein we gain a, 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 a understanding of the essentials of the gospel message of the Bible, New Testament. And we have an ongoing school in Liberia. Every quarter we train between 25 and 40 students. Uh, we support it from here in America, Christ the Savior Ministry. We currently have uh, 41 students, pastors and laity in, 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 in training to learn the essentials of the gospel message of the Bible. Because the Bible says that, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because the gospel message, the words The words, it, the words, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Because God determined by the foolishness of the message, of the message preached, the words preached. You're talking about Samson and Delilah. You're not talking about, you're not talking about a, a saving word. You're not talking about the good news saving word. You give an illustration, an example for steadfastness in the faith. But Samson and Delilah can't do a sinner any good. He doesn't understand it, he doesn't comprehend it, he won't know it, and the devil won't, won't allow him. The devil only take a back seat to Jesus, not no Samson. How about those seven fellas? You remember those seven fellas? Seven sons of Sneva? Who are you? Now, let me go on because I promised that this would be an interesting and exciting and challenging question. We want to, we want to change some mindsets. We want to get rid of the last vestige of any notion that a person can be saved by what he or she reads from Malachi, from Genesis to Malachi. You can't. Because there's one mystery. Uh, in, the, in, in the Old Testament that wasn't resolved. Who was to be the seed of the woman? Who was to be the prophet like Moses? Who was to be the uh, shallow from the tribe of Judah? Who was going to be the synod of David to sit on his throne forever? And who was going to be the branch? Who would be the suffering ser servant? None of those questions are answered in the Old Testament. So pastors, evangelists, come on out of that Old Testament. Tell your people something that's worthwhile for saving faith, growing faith, or sustaining faith. Now, There, is a visual 